you know, you you got got the laid out set up at the crib. Nah, you do all, yeah, don't, <laughs> don't don't even lie. He got so now. Uh, say your friends come by or whoever. Somebody, what's the difference between mixing uh, at home as as opposed to being in the studio? Is it the same criteria or or what? Uh, yeah, basically. I mean, most of the engineers I know they like working in rooms that they're familiar with. And in my home studio, I know what the walls are giving me. You know, like well, what I hear off the speakers. And not only that, when I have clients come over, they might hear something in my room and they're, they're thinking they're hearing one thing and I'm letting them know, no, well, when you hear this in your car, this is, is going to sound great. And then Hold on, oh, give us an example. Uh, with the, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> you lost us. Um, um, bass, you know, bass oh. reflects off walls. You know, right. And, and in my room, in certain, if, depending on where you're sitting in my room, you'll hear a lot more bass than really what's on the tape. Or not enough bass, depending on where, where you are standing in the room. And so, um, because I'm used to these, you know, things happening in the room on a mix, um, I'm able to tell a producer or whatever that, you know, they're going to be fine. Let me mix it down. And then I give them a copy, and they usually put it in their car, and they're happy. I mean, every now and then you might have to make some tweaks. But my room is pretty tuned, you know, so what you hear in my studio is going to sound like that in the car. So you got to have real good ears. That's, this, that's the whole game, man. Hearing the music, can you hear the music? You know, the technical aspect is one thing. You know, you need knowledge, but can you hear the music? If you can't hear the music, you're in the wrong business. Now, is there a specific thing that you look for when you're hearing the music that you can put your finger on, or is it just the whole overall I mean, concept? You know, understanding the artists and who they are and what they're, you know, you know, if I'm mixing a banjo or if I'm mixing a bass player, you know, there's going to be two different criteria there. You know, so. Uh, you just got to know what you're listening for. I, you know, I, most of my talent when it comes to that, I man, it's just God given. I mean, I'm able to walk in a room and sonically know where I'm going to have my problems. You know, um, some days are just not going to be good days. Um, the Vic, Victor Wooten, uh, Marcus Miller, Stanley Clark tour, mm -hmm. or SMV as it was called, uh, again, that, that was very challenging, man, because some rooms, man, were just a complete nightmare. I mean, if you're in a room that's designed for orchestras like 70s, you know, you got all these string instruments, and then you put this rock bass, low heavy bass band in this room, which happened a few times, I mean, what you going to do? It's just going to be bass bouncing all over the walls, and usually there, man, you just pray. <laughs> you know, yeah. Man? You know, so I would, you know, those were nights that were just pretty tough for me, but I was able to still manage to make... A uh, pretty decent mix out because when the people come in, that's another good thing about rooms like that. When the people come in, it absorbs a lot of the room sound. Right, like right. What most people think call echo, but it's just the room sound, um, which create delays and stuff to the bass frequency. All right, so hypothetically, we have the Travis Rogers School of Engineering. <laughs> All right, you got your first freshman class coming in. You're sitting down. You're getting ready to give the uh, symposium. Mm -hmm. What do you tell them? As far as as far as engineering, what 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 what's what's, uh, what's know, something they my, have to my know? Main, my main thing when I when I'm doing clinics and people ask me, you know, what's the best thing to look for is to man use your ears. I mean, because that's at the end of the day, all the knowledge is good, but you gotta hear the music and talk to the artists, you know, because they always will tell you what they want and what they don't want, and you know, develop thick skin, you know, because sometimes you're gonna have an artist snap at you. But if you keep coming back to them with kindness and, and showing them that you really care about their sound, then you're going to get smiles from them later on, and they're going to keep calling you back and calling you back, and you'll be, you know, here I am 20 years later still working, you know, 50, year, 50 artists plus, you know, and less, man. You know. Hey, I just had, I just had a, a, a thought just ran through my mind I wanted to ask you about. You now, you, you say your ears. Now, do your eyes play a part as well when you see, say, a concert is going on and you might see somebody Absolutely. do something? I mean, because you got to watch what the artist is doing. I mean, you know, feedback is your main enemy. You know, you got a cat like Genuine who likes to jump on top of speakers and stuff. So you got you to gotta be careful. You got to watch that stuff. Because when you're, when you're mixing sound, um, your monitor mix, what the artist is hearing, is one mix. And then the house mix is another. And you EQ the room differently accordingly to that. So if an artist jumps out, with his microphone into the house speakers out in the audience and the crowd, you got to be careful because you got to know what's going to create problems for you. So. so have you ever gotten into it with the with the house mixer or the monitor mixer if you were doing house? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Unfortunately, yes. <laughs> I mean, it's just part of the game, you know. Yeah. I mean, because everybody hears music different, man. You know, everybody has their own style. You know, so you know you have to respect the crowd. So, like in in your profession, where your job description, you you get to the gig early, you set up, right. and then uh, uh, somebody not giving you what you need. How do you how do you go about fixing it? What if you get somebody who just won't listen to what you have to say? You mean you talking about like the house techs there? Right, right. At that point, that's when you check them. <laughs> you, you, I mean, you sometimes you go that far. You got to do that. I mean, you got to make sure your artist is happy when they get on stage. And I've had to actually go to the artist and say, "Look." These guys are not giving me what I need. I mean, because, I mean, quite frankly, I mix out of the box. I mean, I'm not that typical, normal. I don't do normal things when I mix. Now, you got uh, Stanley Clark just rolling up and down the bass. Boom, 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 boom. You got uh, Hiromi playing the keys like she on fire or something. Right. How you keep that stuff? It was beautiful now. How you keep it constant? Um, just, I, well, I, you know, I've been mixing for Stanley for nine years and then, you know, Hiromi over the last two years. And so I kind of know what the artists do. I almost know what note they're going to play before they play it. Straight you know? up. So it's like studying the artists and know what they're going to do. So you know what to do in the mix. You know, I already know, okay, I need to turn Stanley up. You know, Stanley sound is very unique to the fact that, you know, he uses reverb on his bass. Right. Most bass players, when you say reverb, they go, what? That's a guitar thing, you know. But Stanley being Stanley, you know, that's the best way I can describe it. You know, he's saw, he. I think, you know, just to talk about his instruments, like the Olympic bass, man, that bass to me is like one of the best sounding instruments because of all the dynamic ranges it has. You know, it can go to a low octave, you know, frequencies down to maybe, you know, 50 hertz. I mean, you almost can't hear those low notes to as high as, you know, 4K. And I know I'm getting a little technical, but, you know, just the dynamic range of that instrument. And it's also a stereo bass. And a lot of people don't know that he plays a stereo bass, and he's always played stereo basses, um, which makes it fun to mix because it's just not one sound. Most bass players, when you get on stage, it's that one sound. You pretty much can EQ them and then never even really go back to that mix again. You just kind of just ride the fader depending on what they're doing. Stanley, no. No, sir, but you got to be watching, listening to what he's doing. When he's changing EQ on his instrument, you got to adjust to what he's doing. So, um... I guess, you know, with me working with him so many years, I've, I've learned that about him. and It's helped me to keep a job. <laughs> All right, for, for the up-and-coming engineers, give them a quick glimpse into the, uh, the life of being on the road with a significant other and how it affects them and what they should prepare for. It's tough, man. I, 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 you know, I don't really know if I have the answers to that question. I mean, you know, Unfortunately, I had a marriage before. I'm, I'm getting engaged right now, and you know, you know, my lifestyle of being on the road, being on the road, you know, months at a time, it can wear thin on on your mate, you know, and understandably. I mean, you're right. away from home, and you know, I totally get that. But you know, this is what I love to do, and you know, God is truly blessing with the woman I have in my life right now, who understands that. And that's that. I think that would probably be the best advice I can give is to find somebody that really loves. You enough to love what you do for a living, first of all, and then then everything else will take its place. Cause I mean, you're gonna be gone, you know, two three months at a time, and you know that can be hard. You know, I thank God for Apple and their iPhone and FaceTime <laughs> because I'm able to, you know, call my baby on FaceTime and we can talk and we see each other, and that really helps, you know, strengthen the relationship. All right, y'all. That's big. Travis Rogers in St. Louis. Well, Belleville, Illinois. <laughs> Levi 2 King Studios, the oh, basement man, number two. two. Yes. J. Ross TV in the house. Y'all, we're going to let them bounce. We up out of here, y'all. Peace.